Jordan did really uh, live up to the expectation I had in my head. It's a country full of culture. People are very uh, polite. There are so many things to see and do. The Wadi Rum is probably the most beautiful desert on earth. Looking at the sunset in the desert is like a sort of mystical experience. When you arrive you can see uh, the sun that is uh, coloring all the sands of this uh, uh, very very dark red. So it's amazing to look at the sunset. So we had the typical tea around the fireplace. Tea in the desert. So neat. A great place where you can find your own balance and your and slow down your rhythm. Because the rest of the trip was incredibly fast. Primo giorno, già le prime difficoltà. Ok, ah. great. First trip of the day in Wadi Rum. Weather forecast, shower. We are in the desert. Supposedly so we should be in an arid place, but it's pouring rain. Thankfully we found a cave. Fingers crossed it stops at some point. We started to uh, cross the, uh, the canyon and it was already raining, but at some point it started really pouring. And at some point someone in front of us, which was Yoon, freaked out and she started to scream. Run, run, the water, water! And we literally had to run for our lives through the canyon. Uh, at some point began to, you know, became river and then they became bigger and bigger. It was really much more difficult to cross them, so at some point we didn't know what to do and, and we decided to go back, hoping that a car that was supposed to wait in front of the canyon was actually coming back and picking us up, which is uh, what luckily happened. But, uh, you know, we had some moments of panic. Let's put Peter on the direction, on the Google Maps direction, and let's move on. Back. We are now traveling through the King's Road uh, towards Petra and behind us you can observe this wonderful Wadi Mujib canyon. One of the things I enjoyed the most was actually driving to the uh, King's Highway, the mythical King's Highway. That road is one of the most beautiful I've ever driven through. We move through history right now. And, uh, we go from the ancient times to the medieval age. Here we are at the castle of Kerak, which was one of the main crusader castles. It was protecting the road that went from uh, Egypt up to Damascus. Really impressed me the two crusader castles that we visited of Kerak and Shobak. Kerak is the, this is the biggest one, but Shobak is probably the nicest one because it's set in an amazing landscape, in an amazing scenery. We are at the Shoba Castle in this dramatic and arid landscape. The castle was built by the King Baldwin I and it is part of the defensive system of the Crusade. The light was amazing and we took beautiful pictures of the sunset. Holy cow! This is like amazing, this is like the best sunset ever. It's like great.
Here you go, we are walking towards Petra. We're very excited, we've been up very early to be here and we can't wait. Welcome to Petra. The arrival at Petra is wonderful. You walk through a small canyon, uh, you go along and suddenly you find yourself in front of the treasury, which is one of the most uh, majestic um, places of the site. The view you have on the treasury is just amazing. It's something that I never experienced in my life. Petra was a dream, not only for archaeologists and architects, but also for kids, because everyone has seen the movie of Indiana Jones. Just uh, admired the view from top and uh, sat down and looked down at the canyon in the sun, and it was one of the best memories I have of Jordan. It is thought that the first settlement in Petra were here 10,000 years ago, but the city really flourished 3,000 years ago with the Nabataeans. The Nabataeans were an, a nomad population, uh, an Arab tribe, who were mostly dedicated to uh, commercial um, activities. The city was then annexed to the Roman Empire, and it was then uh, uh, possessed and controlled by the Byzantines. Pretty much all the buildings in Petra are tombs because the population at the time were nomad and uh, they realized that it was much better to use the sandstone and work with the sandstone instead of creating a separated structure that would have collapsed at the first earthquake. Petra was destroyed by an earthquake and uh, this is when he lost his power into the trade routes and uh, basically in the 7th century it was abandoned. It was discovered in 19th century by a Swiss explorer and it is now one of the seven new wonders. The view of the monastery was breathtaking and the mountains as well over there. It was totally worth it going over there, all, that, um, all, all those steps. Uh, there is a trail that goes from the monastery to Little Petra. It's about two or three hours walk. At least this initial step is quite high in the mountains. Finally managed to get to Little Petra, the small little sister of Petra. Even that side was uh, surprisingly interesting. It was uh, um, much smaller, obviously, than Petra, and uh, is much much less heralded. But still, still, it was very interesting to see. We just negotiated to all of us jump on this car to get back to Petra after 23 kilometers walk. Hello, oh, that's it. Ciao. <laughs> Happy New Year! We are at the Dead Sea. We just took a quick swim in the water and now we're enjoying the mud. I was walking by the ocean, feeling all the motion when she came right up next to One of the first experiences we had is the um, funny floating in the Dead Sea, putting mud all over your body, but at 10 degrees in the morning, so that was great. The sea is a 350 meter behind the level of the sea, and it's very, very salty. It's so salty that you can float, you cannot uh, swim properly, and you can lie on the water uh, reading your book. <laughs> Uh, 
Coming to Jordan is like a travel through history. We start with the ancient times. Here we have Israel behind. This is the valley of the river Jordan. We are on the top of the Mount Nebo where God told to Mosi that this is the promised land. This is the place where Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. The river Jordan, and this is the water used to baptize Jesus Christ. By the other side of the river, we have the Palestine. We are in Madaba. Behind me is the Church of St. George. This church contains a very important mosaic. This is the oldest map existing in the world of the Palestine and the Egypt and the various biblical sites. At the center, you can find Jerusalem. Then you move in the, into the Roman times, uh, well represented by Gerash, which is an amazing uh, city, still quite well preserved. We are in Gerash, the ancient city of Geraza. This is the art of the Emperor Hadrian. Just arrived in Oman, known in the ancient time as Philadelphia, and we are now in the Roman theatre. The Roman theatre, dominating the heart of downtown, was the centerpiece of Roman Philadelphia and also the initial focus for a man's modern settlement late in the 19th century. We are in the city of the Man, which is an important archaeological site, important because you can see in it influences from a different times, from the Greek, Roman, Byzantine and Arabic times. Behind me, there's a Umayyadis tower. We also moved into the more recent times, into the 20th century, with the Arab-Israeli war of the 1967, which created a lot of refugees coming from Palestine to, to, uh, to Jordan. One of the first things that we did was to visit a number of Palestinian camps, and among them we met a priest who has founded a uh, shelter place uh, for the, uh, Christian, the Iraqi Christian uh, that fled from uh, Mosul in Iraq in 2014 after ISIS invaded the, uh, the city. On the beginning of uh, August, I received a phone call from Caritas. Father, can you receive some refugees? In totally, around 150 people, all of them very tired, so immediately I understood why I am here. The Lord sent me here to receive these people. He basically found his mission in life by welcoming, welcoming these people and helping them to overcome their very serious plight. Jordan has traditionally been a uh, welcoming uh, country for uh, Palestinian refugees. Uh, now, Palestinians account for 42% of the, the population here. Initially, the, uh, uh, the places where they settled uh, were really camps with tents, while now uh, they look like any other parts of the city and uh, the living standards are more or less the same as the rest of the country. We are in a Palestinian camp and we are tasting this delicious makluba, which is an upside dish. That means it gets pretty much cooked in a way and then served upside down. And we are with a local family and as you can see the food is going to be for everyone.
I felt that in, in some respect uh, the, the culture here is uh, similar to ours uh, in terms of the value, the family value. Everybody expects us to have hummus, falafels, and baba ganoush every day. Hummus and falafel, enough. But once uh, we discover one of the fish that's called makluba, you actually basically like cook the rice with herbs and fry the chicken and vegetables together with herbs in the cooking pot and then you flip it, so it's called upside down. So uh, this is the last day in Jordan to feel a, a little bit melancholic about leaving uh, because I've seen some very beautiful things here. Coming in, in winter times means that you have less hours of daylight. I didn't expect it to be that cold and especially rain. I completely underestimated it and I forgot like rain or anything. It's so cold. There's a storm in Jordan. Many wonderful things in Jordan, but beware there are also a lot of scams waiting for you. Top one is Petro by night, uh, two minutes flute, one cup of tea, and an incomprehensible monologue, 17 dinners. Total scam. Uh, we were a numerous group uh, this time around, but um, I appreciate how easily we took decision where, when it was needed. The amount of things that you can see in Jordan is huge, it's packed with many attractions. And of course, being in a group of like good friends, we're all living the same experience together makes everything memorable. Ha 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 ha!